What's going on, everyone? Charlie here. Hope you're doing all right. Hope you're all having a good summer so far. It's been a while since I've made a video related to market finance, but I have been very busy lately working on the Discord, trying to learn all this data. Been getting into vector databases uh, lately, which has been crazy. Lots of crazy stuff out there to use, but we're going to go ahead and go over the bank capital requirements that hit the media a couple of days ago. And those of you that have followed me for a while, you know that this is one of my big things I've been following um, back in 2021 when they, when they first drafted the NSFR ratio over the 4th of July weekend. Um, that essentially um, is the purpose of that was to create a source of stable funding. It stands for net stable funding ratio. Basically, they're going to be um, making sure that their funding is stable and they created a bunch of new definitions. It was a very, very um, long uh, CFR document and there was a lot of major things that were going to be uh, relevant in today's market that were originally drafted back then. So we're actually seeing the effects of that document start to come into play now this year. And um, the full extent of the capital requirements as uh, as of two days ago um, for the big banks, now for the mid to small players, that's coming up next month. But for the big banks, it's not going to take place until uh, 2028 in full swing. So they're given a lot of leeway here to prepare for these changes. Right now we have the debt ceiling and forbearance. We have um, you know, the repo market starting to unwind during the midst of, you know, quote, pauses. And by the way, when they pause the rate hikes and the repo goes down, it has the same effect economically as a rate hike. So I found it very hilarious that during the pause is when they went ahead and, and drained the repo, likely to make more room to capture the liquidity drain and fire sale of assets that's going to be taking place due to these bank capital requirements. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this means. We're going to use GBT4. I'm going to summarize the document real quick, and uh, we're going to go from there. So let's go ahead and just copy this back to GPT-4. And I'm going to use the code interpreter plugin here. And I'm going to just paste it and ask it to summarize. And then it will send me a way to upload it. So what I'm going to do now, actually, I'm going to go here, one of my old chats here, and I'm going to upload it to this website here. Let's see, I might need to download this. So let me download this in Python real quick. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to use the, the plugin. You can also use a plugin. So we're going to go to plugins. We're going to use um, summarize app, and we're going to say summarize. And it's going to give us a brief rundown of what it means. Man, I wish I had this two years ago when I was trying to uh, read all these documents to everybody. It would have made things a lot easier. So the document titled Large Bank Capital Requirements from July 2023, published by the Federal Reserve, provides information about the capital requirements for large banks, which were not really all that affected back in 2021 when the NSFR was first drafted. So the industry got very upset because it targeted medium to small size players um, to basically give uh, give the big, biggest players, more reign over the markets, more than they already have. So, so the background on this, the Fed Reserve promotes a safe vision-making system that supports the U.S. economy through the supervision regulation of domestic and foreign banks. As part of its supervision efforts, the Fed Reserve conducts an annual supervisory stress test. This test assesses how large banks are likely to perform under hypothetical economic conditions. And um, this figure that they're referring to is right here. Um, you see here that the Federal Reserve conducts stress tests to ensure the large banks are sufficiently capitalized and are able to lend to households and businesses even in a severe recession. So the Federal Reserve develops stress test scenarios. The Federal Reserve develops or selects their models. Banks submit detailed bank data. And then you put all this together and using the scenario data and bank data as variables in the stress test models, the Federal Reserve projects how banks are likely to perform under hypothetical economic conditions. And then the last little box here says the Fed Reserve uses the results of supervisory stress tests in part to set capital requirements for participating banks. So back in 2020, 2021, the results of the stress tests weren't all that great. So we had some capital requirements in SFR ratio implemented. And those are those effects are actually going to be taking effect this year, next month. So when it comes to the capital requirements under the Fed Reserve's board, capital framework for bank holding companies, 
covered savings and loan holding companies and U.S. intermediate holding companies with $100 billion or more in total consolidated assets, capital requirements are in part determined by the supervisory stress test results. The total common equity tier one or set one capital ratio requirement for each large bank is made up of several components, including a minimum set one capital ratio requirement of 4.5%. The stress buffer capital or the stress capital buffer, otherwise known as SCB requirement, which is determined from the supervisory stress test results. And this one is at least at 2.5%. And if applicable, a capital surcharge for global systematically important banks, GSIBs, which is at least 1%. So those are the thresholds for those different kinds of banking institutions. Now, point four here says large bank capital requirements. Table one shows the large bank capital requirements effective October 1st, 2023. So those are that's actually coming up right around the pipe <laughs> into the fiscal year. Um, the table lists the minimum set one capital rate ratio requirement, stress test capital buffer requirement, set one capital requirement, and GSIB surcharge for each large bank. For example, Bank of America Corporation has minimum set one capital ratio requirement of 4.5%, a stressed capital buffer requirement of 2.5%, a GSIB surcharge of 2.5%, and a total set one capital requirement of 9.5%. Um, and that was just the first four pages. Please summarize further into the document, looking at any potential insights to the future risk outlook. And you can that's what you can do now. You can talk to these documents now, just like I'm doing here. You can have a discussion with these PDFs. You don't have to read them. You can just have something read it for you and have a discussion with it. Oh, does the document link have four pages? Whoopsies. Okay, so let me go get the full document. Let me go back here. Um, this is the stress test results. That was only four pages long. Um, this is the long one, I think. Yeah, this is a 41 page document. So let's go ahead and post this one. We may get some more detail on it. But yeah, this is very important stuff coming up. Um, it's being overlooked by a lot of people that I've seen uh, making videos online and stuff. Um, the, the bull run, if you go look at the short interest, the markets are going up, short interest is going down. What did you see last year? Short interest went up, markets went down. Funny how that works. Okay, so this one is the bank capital requirements, a primer and policy issues. And this was published, you know, right around the banking uh, fiasco that happened earlier this year in March. Um, bank capital requirements, it talks about that and it talks about risk weighted assets. So the report explains the concept of risk weighted assets or RWA, which are used to determine how much capital an institution must hold to remain adequately capitalized. Assets are grouped into risk categories and assigned a risk weight which determines how much capital a bank must hold against exposure. For example, U.S. investments or investments in U.S. government bonds have a risk weight of 0%, while most corporate exposures and junior lien residential mortgages have a risk weight of 100%. Then we talk about minimal capital requirements. The document provides a detailed explanation of the minimal capital requirements that banks must comply with. These requirements are calculated as a percentage of total risk-weighted assets. The document also discusses the Community Bank Leverage Ratio, or CBLR, and the Enhanced Capital Framework for Large Banks. There's also a Future Risk Outlook. The document discusses the Basel III reform, sometimes referred to as the Basel III Endgame, which I found funny. This is the real endgame, Basel III Endgame for Basel IV. <laughs> the reforms aim to reduce the excessive variability of risk-weighted assets and restore credibility in the calculation of RWAs. The leverage ratio revisions include introducing a leverage ratio buffer to further limit the leverage of the global systematically important banks. The implementation of these standards could result in greater divergence between U.S. implementations of Basel III and the Basel III agreements, making U.S. regulation more complex or eliminating U.S. divergence, which could result in higher or lower capital requirements depending on the provision. And this is the important one, the modifying the enhanced SLR for GSIBs. Um, the document discusses a, pr a proposed rule to modify the Enhanced Supplemental Leverage Ratio, or ESLR, for GSIBs, and instead of 5% and 6% for the holding company and depository subsidiary, respectively, these rules or this rule proposes setting the ESLR for each GSIB at 3% plus half of its GSIB surcharge for both the holding company and the depository subsidiary. 
This would allow the amount of capital required to be held by GSIBs under the ESLR to increase with their systemic importance. So if you all remember back in 2020 when the markets went, you know, bull run city, uh, yeah, the supplemental leverage ratio was modified right before that happened. Now, this isn't exactly the same thing, but it's it's interesting that we're modifying the ESLR, which is the enhanced SLR, specifically for GSIBs, and we're changing it from 5% and 6% to 3% for both companies. So I found this very interesting, and this is a very, very important topic that you're going to want to stay uh, on top of, but I just wanted to go over that with you real quick. These developments came out a couple of days ago, and uh, it's very important. It's going to be very relevant moving into the next quarter uh, to finish out the year. So again, these requirements are going to be going into effect in October for mid to small size players. And then the large banks for their um, provision get until 2028 until everything's in full swing. So hopefully you found this one helpful and um, yeah, stay on top of stuff. I'll try to get more videos out explaining what's going on. I've just been very, very busy lately trying to uh, develop all of this stuff with discord and everything else. So anyways, y'all have a good one.